Okay, welcome. Saturday morning here in Sydney. Been a busy week. I haven't actually touched Mando all week. I've been um, working on that Mortal Kombat stuff. And uh, it's going to be fun to get back into Mandalorian. I really want to get this finished off so I can get it uh, get it rendered and get some shots up there in the showreel or in the um, on johndickinson.net um, in the portfolio. Um, so I'm going to just finish off the helmet um, as much as I can and then I'll just uh, start working my way down and um, maybe do the, um, the leather next and uh, see where we go from there. So if you're around just say hi in the chat. Have any questions just let me know. Um, if you see anything I could be doing better definitely let me know. All right, so let me just turn my music down. It's a bit loud. Okay. Um, so where I left it last week was I just added this um, this mud, and that was looking pretty good. But it's obviously you know it's obviously too uniform. It's all over. So I just want to go through there and hit it up, hit it with paint and just get rid of a little bit of that. Um, Let's see, I'm just going to go into 3D only. I haven't got much space here. Um, clicking on the mask. Okay, so remember last week we, we applied warp. Um, and I used warp because I'd, I'd used a spots um, map and it wasn't looking quite right. But then I, um, then I chose this grunge splashes, which looked a lot better. I don't think I actually need to use warp. I might just also bring down my resolution too because it's still at 4096. Just let that, I'll let that redraw for a moment. Hey Brighton. I was getting to the stage with the, um, the helmet that um, I needed to see it in 4096 to really clarify how it was actually looking. That's redrawn now, so just bringing my mask down. So with and without warp, you just see that breaks that up a little bit. It still looks quite good with the warp on, but I don't know whether it's necessary. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so clicking on paint. So you can see I've already started to paint a little bit of that out. I just grab my Wacom tablet much easier to paint in Substance Painter with a pen. Holding down the Alt key and just dragging around. Now I'm going to Alt click on the mask and that's going to show me the black and white mask which is going to make this a lot easier. Choose my brush, my favorite dirt brush. Dirt. Here we go. There's so many brushes, it's good just to do a little search like that. Uh, dirt spots. I can try any of these really. Uh, probably this one here. It's my favorite one, Dirt 2. Just scale that down. So I just don't want it to be as uniform. I can be pretty arbitrary with my paint strokes, just trying to break it up a little bit. Uh, I need to hit X. No, I need black. So, so this is um once again a little bit of a gotcha. I'd clicked on paint, um, and I was ready to ready to draw on, uh, ready to brush put my brush strokes on using paint, and then I um I hit X and I've gone back to selecting my mask, and that way this this means I'm going to be drawing on my mask, and I don't want that. It's much better to draw on paint. I just want to get rid of a few of these. It might be better now at this level to click on the actual there like that. I could have just pressed M. I need to actually now see whether where there's too much. It's a bit little hard to tell in black and white. And this is all, you know, really subjective. Just 
for any bit of that out. So as I was talking last week, working as procedural, um, working for working procedurally as long as possible, you know, building things up. I've got dirt and grunge and levels, and then using paint just to take things away. Like you wouldn't start with a paintbrush and start drawing paint splashes on this. That would be madness. Get it as close as you can procedurally, and then just uh, go in and paint. I virtually never sort of use, the, use these brushes to paint things like dirt. Only occasionally. Just a little bit of mud splashes on this. And I'll get it as close as I can. And then as I'm moving around the model doing other parts, I might notice bits that I want to remove. That's fine. I'm just going to just do a once over. So just removing anything that looks obviously, you know, computer generated. Just big groups of spots mainly is what I want to remove. Just pressing C um, to view my my map there, my mask. Oops, X. Pressing C to view it is better because it leaves paint selected. Breaking this up. from there. Just see, just press M just to view that. What happens if I remove that? Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. See again. So this is, you know, the Mandalorian's armor where it hasn't been sort of wiped down. So it's made maybe just, you know, out in the um, desert or whatever. Um, hasn't had a chance to really wipe it down, but hasn't been in any sort of really, you know, messy skirmishes so it's not it's not covered in mud i could have done it much less um dirty than this much cleaner but um i did want to add a bit of dirt to it i just think it makes it more fun hey joe Don't want too much on the front of the visor. Probably be a bit annoying if there was a whole lot of mud there. Once again, I'm going to press um, M just to view all of my channels. You can see that's that's really obvious that it's too much. Just little bits, little specks here and there. It is very, there's a lot of occlusion around here as well, which I might have to remove a bit of. There's way too much there. I don't think there would be that much. Just don't want anything too obvious. I'm going to light this fairly dark too. So, 
and a lot of this will be hidden with the lighting. Fairly moody lighting with this. Okay, just come over here again. Just going to move my lighting around, holding down the shift key and the right mouse button. That reveals that much more clearly. I'm streaming this on Periscope on Twitter as well for the first time. Okay, so that's looking, that's looking reasonably good. Not too much. A little bit on the top there. splashes of mud okay so just a quick save just take a moment to do that so what I'll do is I'll go in and um, I'm just going to remove some of this occlusion from the visor that's way too much in there Okay, so let's just work out where that is. I want to. I might just come back to um, 1024. I just got that UV tile selected, so in texture set settings, I can individually change the independently change the texture set uh, resolution. So I'm just going to bring that back to 1024. I love being able to do that to individual UDIM tiles. So much easier. All right. So I can still see what's going on there. Uh, let's work out where those where that occlusion is. Hopefully, if I've named my layers properly, let's let that redraw. So there's definitely that one. So there's that one and grime occlusion. Yeah, I did name these all occlusions. So I think it's a combination of all of these. Is way is <laughs> way too much. There's a fair bit of dirt still in there. That's fine. I can leave that. Um, there, that one there. Just particularly looking at the, all this mess around here. I might just clean up some of that. So in here, I've got uh, just this roughness um, wipe smudgy now this is actually in a folder so this was probably from a smart material i'm just going to bring that out there's no sense being in a in a folder a group like that click on the mask okay there is a paint effect there i'm just going to come in and just press the c key and just clean up this on the visor now if i don't want to affect the helmet I should hide the helmet, so um, I haven't got much space here. Where am I looking at? Let's hide that. Now, Alt H is the shortcut to hide groups, so let me just come back to my. I gotta find out which one my visor is. So that will be much more used to working on a large screen area, of course. Um, yeah, just come back up to here. Come up to 2D. So my visor is 1004. All right.
to use these shortcuts as well. 1.04. Now I need to make sure I can hide everything else. So just work out how to do this. I've got the visor and the armor in the same folder. Maybe I'll bring the visor out. Now if I do that, then I'm going to not be able to add the dirt and grunge to it. It's all about being organized. See, I can, I can isolate that now, um, but obviously because it's not in the same folder as Armour Visor, um, I'm not seeing any of the dirt and occlusion. Just going to undo that. Bring that back in here. See, that's what, that's what I'm expecting to see. Now I could bring all of this. Um, I could bring all of this dirt up above that. Obviously, that's going to affect everything now, not just the helmet and the visor. Better have a think. And the, the visor could have its own set of these layers, these dirt and wear and tear layers. I'm trying to use as few layers as possible, obviously. So you can see how that's added that to everything now. <laughs> he's, uh, he's pretty dirty. That's way too much. Looks like he's um, just taken a mud bath. So don't want to be doing that. That's going to undo that. And what I'll do is I will paint on the, uh, I'll just go M. I'll go back to uh, 3D, 2D. Let's come over to the Visor. No, it was this one here, wasn't it? And just making sure that for my alignment, I'm using UV. Otherwise, I'll start painting on other other things. So, if I go here and paint. Now my visor is also at 4096, so I'm going to have to just knock that back. So that was 1004. Remember, we can tell the resolution of a UDIM just by looking down the bottom left-hand corner. So come back to 1004. It's still selected. And just change that to 1024. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Much better to work at that. Okay, so what have we got? That appears to be the back. And that's the front. Let's go C. Um, roughness, there we go. So I can paint either on the 3D view or the 2D view. So 
get rid of it on this. Okay, that's good. Uh, come back to my layers. Let's turn on dirt occlusion. There's a fair bit there. So let's see. Um, yeah, that's the that's the inside that one. Okay, so um, make sure I have the right thing selected. So in my dirt occlusion, um, once again, I've got this, this is part of a smart material. So I'm just going to pull that out, get rid of this folder, rename this. And I already have paint on there. You can see I've already been doing a little bit of painting on that one. I'm going to knock this back. I think I'll just hide my um, uh, UVs for now. F2, there we go. Just want to knock this back. There's way too much occlusion on this visor. Okay, that's good. It's definitely better. Uh, once again, what have I got here? Let's see. Um, yeah, I've got to keep that in the folder. I'm going to add a paint. I think I've already got one there. We go. Start knocking this back as well. Yeah, that'll do. And dust occlusion. Not too much on that one. Undo that for a sec. Uh, 
How does that look? That's good. M. That's definitely better. I can still go in and fine tune that some more, but Okay, so um, I'm just going to go through and just clean up some of the mud on the rest of the armor. Just a quick save. And I think I'm going to move on to the leather. Actually, I'm on the wrong thing here. I want to be on the mud. Just going to break up these clumps of dirt or mud splashes. It's looking better. Like I said, I'm, as I'm working through the texturing, I'll, I might see, look at this from a different angle and see there's a little bit too much somewhere. Actually, the other one. I find using a dirt brush for something like this is much better than using just a normal brush because it just knocks back the the mud without just you know wiping it off so 
if I do this, it just kind of knocks it back. You can see if I use a big hard brush, it just literally just wipes it off and it's not what I want. I want some to be a little more obvious than others. I don't want necessarily just completely remove big areas. That's why the dirt brush is so good for this kind of thing. Okay, seems to be a, a little bit too much on the old uh, helmet here. Looking at that again. Alright, let's just do the chest plate. That's because you're UVing that train, right, Joe? Ten hours. My god, that's a long time. How comfortable are you in Ryzen UV? Are you um are you strong in it? I understand if you're not you know, not quite as experienced, it takes longer for sure. Once you get used to it, it's definitely faster. I don't have to worry about this dark area here because that's completely covered by the bandolero, bandolero, bandolier, whatever you want to call it. A lot of dirt in there, probably just get rid of that. So much fun texturing your own models. That looks pretty good. Okay, so just quick save. Yeah, the shortcuts definitely. So I'll move on to the leather now, I think. Let's just close up the armor visor. Um, Alt H just to show everything again. Yeah, let's have a go at this leather. Might just quickly grab a reference image. Um, just grab pure ref. Where is it? Doink. I think the cape is close. Um, I'm not going to do too much more to the cape. Maybe just increase the resolution, uh, the um, decrease the scale of those bumps. But I'm going to add some hair in Cinema 4D to that. I think that'll that'll really help with that. Okay, that's saved now. So next is the um, the leather here. Just kind of, I've only just chucked on a couple of examples. Um, let's just open up the reference. Just load a recent scene. Just using my other monitor here. Uh, Mando clothes might be good enough. 
here. There we go. So it's pretty blurry. Um, you can see it's pretty dirty. There's a fair bit of dirt on there. Um, not easy to, to get great reference shots, but you know, it's just dirty leather basically. I don't know how much grain there is in there. I just, you know, I, there's no really good close-ups of it. But it is, it is quite dirty and there is stitching as well. So I'll definitely, I definitely left some um, uh, spaces in the, in the model for stitching. All right. I can pretty much just, as long as I make it fairly dark like this, I think I can just use my own creative license on this one. Mine's kind of the right color. Mine's maybe a little bit bright, but... Alt-C, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so, strap. Nice and organized here. <coughs> So inside strap, I've got leather and steel because there is, you know, there's the belt buckle and there's a few, you know, there's these um, these uh, pulse rifle charges in there. Let's have a look and get this looking a little better. So where's, what's leather? Leather, I've got my base and I've got this bull leather worn. I think that's a good base. And what's my, I might just bring it up to 2048. So once again, come back to my 2D only. So what's that F3? And the strap, where is it? Up here, it's 10053. 10, so it's this is where it's really good to put single objects on single UDIMs. It just makes things makes life so much easier. And to keep your UDIM, uh, your UVs really, really organized. 105.3, select that in my list. And I'm going to bring it to 2048. Press F2. It, with, especially with leather, you can see how that changes that. See all the detail in there now? I might quickly just bring it up to 4096 and see if that changes it even more. Leather's, leather's tricky like that. If you leave it at 1024, you're not going to see all the detail. It was really flat at 1024. Now it's got a lot more variation. It's even brighter at uh, 4096. So. Need to make some adjustments. Let's see what um, what fancy things it actually has. So maybe bring it a little bit darker. I have created my own leather before using um, using various tools, but it just doesn't really make sense to start from scratch. Bring that down. Trouble is with working at 4096, it can be really slow. My machine's pretty slow though, anyway. Uh, let's see, roughness. I, I think it'd be pretty dirty. Um, I'll just bring that back a bit. Because I'll probably uh, I'll add some roughness on top, obviously, using dirt and grime and that sort of thing. See, just changing that roughness value slowed that right down. So this is a leather from Substance Source. That is slow, isn't it? Wow. That's not bad though. You want it to pick up a little bit of, you know, um, specular in there, see that? You don't want it too flat. That's actually not bad. 
it's already got some built-in dirt and stuff as well. It's not a bad texture, but it's I think it's too um, uh, scratch color is this light brown. I'm going to knock that back as well. Ah, uh, that made a big difference. See that? Yeah, that's looking pretty good, actually. So you can get a really long way just with one material because all of the things that you, you'd need to customize it are built into the material, which is fabulous. That's why I love Substance Painter. It is a bit blotchy. Um, so apply scratch uniformly, locally by mask. Um, leave that. Um, apply worn. I've got no warm, uh, uniformly, I'm not really sure what that means, uh, let's just go uniformly. Ah, okay. Looks like it's been left at the bottom of a, of a, um, a wardrobe in a, in a room that's a bit damp. <laughs> it's got a bit of mildew on it. Uh, I don't like that at all. Uh, let's bring that back to no warm. Leather height range, let's just maybe adjust the height. Remember, I'm just using the parameters that are actually built into the material first before I start applying other things to it. Just seeing how close I can get it. it does look pretty good. Pixel density is reasonably high, so I can't. I will be able to get fairly close to this. Okay, so metallic. I don't know what will metallic do. It is a bit of a pain working at four hundred nine six, but kind of have to to really understand what the material is going to properly look like. Then I can knock it back to one hundred two four. I like how I actually modeled this in. See this bump here? That's just modeled in because um, I saw it on the reference image. I guess that's a piece of metal underneath the leather to which this, this plate is attached. It's nice looking at the reference material and then modeling in parts you know you're going to use textures on. Like you can see the bumps I put in here for the stitches. I've actually put a little trench along it. So a little trench along here or to hold the stitches in place along here. This will look really good when it's got stitching. So, uh, let's have a look at some of the wear and tear settings on this. Just quickly save this. Okay, come on, save, save. All right, over the year that I um, build my own PC, I think. Stepped into the PC world about four years ago, and uh, you know, after 20, 25 years in on in using Mac. So I'm, I, I never use Mac these days, except for my kids' computers. I'm th I don't miss it at all, but. I think I'm ready now to take the next leap and um, build something that's a little faster than this old HP that I'm using. Okay, large scratch density. Um, so we do want scratches because they do look pretty good. Um, small scratch density. Crack flatten intensity. Custom color under leather. Use color border. Border intensity, I'm not sure what that's going to do. I'm going to bring that right down. Ah, okay. That kind of flattened it out, didn't it? So I'll just undo that.
built five computers in the past five years. Man, you're a you're a machine. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at these. Let's look look at large scratch density. Just bring that up. Ah, okay. So now we know what those are going to do. So that's way too much. This is where you'd really need to see the um, the object up nice and close, where you could really match it perfectly. But I I can't do that, and even all the images that I have it are all blurred as well. So. So the problem with these kind of scratches um, that are built into the material is you can see at a, at a larger setting, it just it applies them so uniformly. You can't control that. You can't add paint um, in here and try and mask those out. That's why you probably have to apply your scratches separately. But I can add a few. Having that large scratch density really slow just puts these little nicks in it. So it's just little nicks into the leather, which I quite like. Maybe just a little bit more. Would be nice if you could change that color though. Okay, that's good. Uh, medium scratch densities, take a look at those. I don't really see what that's doing. Bring that down to zero. It'd be good. I don't know if it's possible, but it'd be good to be able to take um, um, take screenshots inside of Substance Painter. And you could do comparisons like you can in Redshift. Uh, I can't really see what that's doing. So I'll just leave it up high. Okay, so medium scratch height. Let's have a look at this medium scratch height too. Let me bring that up. It really is like pulling teeth working at 4096. It's so slow on my system. So it crashed for a second there. I think it's starting to look pretty good. Um, crack flatten intensity. Let's just bring that right up. I don't know, didn't seem to make a lot of difference. I think overall that's a really good start to that leather. As we saw in the reference image, it is actually really quite dirty. Um, just looking at the reference image again, there is a lot of sort of, you know, like white, whiter areas, lighter, lighter areas and darker areas. So it definitely needs more variation. Not really anything else I can adjust in there. Now I've got my scale at 8.26, so the UVs are quite small. And I think that's, because this is bull leather. Let me just bring that back to one. It's going to be, yes. <laughs> now. And that's why we couldn't see the scratches properly because I've got them so small. Uh, it was very difficult to see what was going on there. So that's a bit of a gotcha. I should have, I should have had that a little higher. Maybe that's too much. Maybe five. 
obviously I dropped that when I was um, when I first applied the material. Where's my? Uh, there we go. That's the one I want. You can really start to see those scratches now. Look pretty good. Look, we can get up pretty close. You can see he hasn't got a head. That's why it's good to do it at 4096. I think that's looking pretty good. Um, I'll obviously have to apply some dirt and I have to do my stitching and that sort of thing. I haven't used a new stitching in Substance Painter yet, so I'll, I won't mess around with it today. I'll just do a bit of a test with that and then I'll, um, I'll look at doing those next week. I've got the same um, metal material as the Bezcar applied to, or do I actually? No, I think I've got something different on this. Let's just check out this. Um, the um, buckle is a darker metal, like a black. And these are just sort of some sort of nondescript steel and it's very dirty as well too. Okay, let's have a look. Close up my leather. I've just added stained steel to this. I don't have to do too much to these. I'm hardly going to see these in the last in the um, in the renders. Going to get rid of the dirt because I'm going to add other dirt in there. That is really starting to look good. Um, just wondering, uh, maybe I just need to bring this level up. It's resolution. So this is 1054. I think everything that I need is on that. Yeah, all of these bits. So thinking about the UVs, thinking about the texturing when you're UVing, really important because I've done. UV in the past where I haven't really thought about UV placement or UV um, rotation or angle or where they are on different tiles and I've come to texture it and it's just oh, it's just like you know unscrambling an egg it's really important to keep your UVs tidy it saves you so much time and if you're using hundreds of UDIMs then geez it's just exponential so that's 1054 so we'll come up to here 105 Four, and change that to 4096 as well. F3, F2, sorry. So this is going to bring that to a higher res. It's look pretty good. I've used the same material on this. This is actually probably not going to be quite as bumpy so I want to knock that bump back <coughs> so let's just select steel base and come down to my let's see my parameters I've got a random seed I've got basic parameters so not much built into this one the basic steel. Um, if I just turn normal off, there you go. So normal is what's giving us the height. So if I just bring that normal uh, intensity down.
and turning off the roughness, seeing what roughness is doing. Back to one. Going to try it at two. Hmm. Okay. Now I've got triplanar projection on that one. I'm not even sure if I need triplanar. I'm just going to bring that back to UV because these have been UV nice and neatly. You can see how um, the rotation is slightly different and I'm also getting some um, the rotation is different because the UVs are rotated differently um, but I'm also getting some repeat there it's way too much I reckon it's got too much damage actually I'm going to come to my shelf. Um, and I'm not sure what the shortcut is. Uh, where am I? Where is my shelf? Yeah, I did mention that a few minutes ago, um, Pro Tools. You have to watch the re you have to watch the replay. <laughs> Leather's not finished yet. Now, where is my shelf gone? I can't find my shelf. Uh, Ah, I got it docked over here. Stupid me. Okay, I'll never forget that. Um, I want it over the other side. I want it there. All right, um, steel. I'm going to turn off stained steel and just apply something else.
Yeah, that's brushed. I don't really want brushed either. I don't want that one. Undo. Steel glossy. Neighbors just started with his leaf blower. That's not bad. Still a bit brushed. Steel dark, I might use for the um, belt buckle. That. So I'll keep that on there. Just turn that off. What's this one? So just auditioning a few different materials. Actually, that one's quite interesting too. It's got a bit of occlusion in there. It's got a bit of dirt and stuff built in. I'm just going to check that. It's a it's aged. Uh, scratches are separate. And that could be more more trouble than it's worth. I like that it has the um, occlusion already built in there. Save me some hassle. I'll just turn that one off for a sec. Uh, steel medieval, don't think so. Steel stained. Scratched. That's too rusty. Still warning, that's what I had before. A lot of these come from a substance source. It's quite dark, but I'll have a look at um, the settings for that one. Hey, Serge. That's pretty nondescript steel. It's also got, it's got too much scratches on it. Okay. Uh, I want to keep this pretty simple. Um, get rid of that. Steel glossy. Let's try that. Alright, I think I tried that before, but I think I can adjust that. Brush intensity, bring right down to zero. Surface imperfections, bring down. Actually, I can probably leave that as it is. I don't mind a few of those. Um, steel roughness, bring down. Whoa, that's um, too much. Yeah, they're not bad. Bring it up to maybe three. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Remember, I'm always trying to establish the base as quickly and easy as possible using existing materials. I could easily just add a fill and then, you know, choose all my different channels, change the color, add the height, add the roughness. But why start from scratch? One of Substance Painter's strengths is the fact that it has so many presets.
yeah, texturing is probably more chill. I'd say I agree with you. Um, it's funny when I'm when I'm modeling, I'm thinking oh, I really should do some texturing, and when I'm texturing, I think I really should be modeling. <laughs> so um, I think I enjoy both, and I think I I particularly enjoy texturing the models that I've modeled. Um, if I had to choose between the two, I would choose modeling because that is definitely, I think, probably slightly more skillful than texturing. Not, not, not to you know, underplay how, you know, how difficult good texturing is, but I think modeling is probably more challenging. And that's probably what te makes texturing chill, right? Because it's a little easier. Okay, that looks better. See, I've gotten rid of most of the crap on there, but I've got a good base. And even though the UVs, even though this UV is rotated um, so that the application is a different direction, even though I've got to change the material on this, it still looks pretty uniform. Uh, and that one's not too bad either. Rendering, yeah. Rendering's going to look good. Starting to look good. So I think I've got a good base for that. I don't have to do any more to that other than add some wear and tear. Made mostly not really wear and tear on this, more dirt. Wouldn't want these to be <laughs> be too worn out because it probably might explode and blow his chest out or blow his guts out. Um, this is actually quite dirty on the reference images. It's actually filthy. Let's have a look. You can see here. Uh, although he did change his armor. Um, Obviously here the actual rifle strap is not in place, but it's still pretty dirty. And these have got a fair bit of occlusion in them as well. So I'll add all that later. Because I've already established a lot of that on the armor, so I'll just borrow. Because um, he's been in the same place, right? The dirt and crap that he's got on his armor will probably be on his other uh, um, clothing as well. So I've already established all of that. I'll just copy and paste that over and just fine tune. Um, that's pretty good. But I do want this to be a darker metal because it looks like it's darker on the references. So let's just have a look at how to do that. I'll just save. Yeah, I love the precision of modeling, Serge. But I also like, I like the precision of hard surface modeling and the challenge. But then when I go in with a brush and, you know, do a bit of sculpting and stuff, I love the fluidity of that. I love that hard surface modeling is so unforgiving. Like I, uh, I had a project recently um, on the side where, where I worked with Toby um, Pittman and we, we modeled a, an Epson printer. And that was so super precise. It just everything had to be super precise. And we had no guide images or CAD. It was just on reference images. And after that, my head was fried. So, you know, then doing something where you're just, um, you know, using a big brush and pushing points around, doesn't have to be so precise, is quite liberating. So I like both. So that, that's actually starting to look quite good, that, um, that leather. As I mentioned, I'll do all the stitching next week. Um, let's just get this metal buckle. I guess that's a buckle, isn't it? Um, Sort it out. UV projections on. I talk about this in an upcoming tutorial. I've actually recorded some tutorials for the Mortal Kombat logo that I modeled last week. I'm releasing a set of tutorials on um, for Boris Effects on you know on the modeling, unwrapping, texturing, and um, adding you know post visual effects to that. And I talk about um, um, a whole bunch of these uh, sort of issues that pop up during those um, various um, steps. And one of them is um, you know, triplanar versus UV projection. I personally find that I'll use, always use UV projection because generally my UVs are pretty good. I'll only use triplanar where I really have to because I've, I just find that UV projection gives me a better 
fidelity result. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Um, okay, so still glossy. All right, so we had this dark, we had this, which one? Steel, dark stained. Was that the one? No, don't want that one. I can go. Steel dark. Steel glossy can go into the base. Just keeping organized. Steel stained can go. Steel dark aged can go in there as well. Turn that on. Okay, so that's the one that had the, all right, so that's not the one I wanted. I'll get rid of that. Had all the scratches. I want something nice and dark. Let's try this parkerized one. Nope. Gunmetal matte, gunmetal painted. Let's try that. That's got a lot of edge wear on it. Uh, it could be good. Let's come in here. Get rid of the scratches. Yeah, that could be good. Uh, I'll get rid of the scratches. I don't need to sharpen. That'll probably be a good base. Let's sharpen. Sharpen just gives me those worn edges. I'll leave that there. Scratches I'll turn off. And yeah, it's not bad. But I obviously, I don't want it to apply to all this other stuff as well. So I need to isolate that. So I'll name this buckle and I'll add a black mask. Obviously that turns everything off. So now with that black mask selected, I'll come over to my UVs. There's my buckle there. And I'll go into UV mode. I'll click on my mask and just select that. F2. There we go. So, see, I've still got everything under the strap um, group. I've got my leather and my steel in there. And under steel, I have um, my buckle. Let's bring that up there. And I have my, um, well, I've called base because I was going to add all of the wear and tear above that. So I will bring that back in there like that. You see all my, all my, um, my wireframe. Okay back to paint. So now I've isolated that as well in the same group, which is really good. A lot of product modeling. Yep. Yeah, I do a lot of products as well. Yeah, always learning definitely. So the leather and the um, the other bits and pieces for that are basically done. I just want to quickly check the button on that release. I reckon that's probably the same material, but it's it's really dirty. I don't know whether I want to put a different material on that. Can't see it on anything else. So 
So all of the dirt and stuff will go on that later. So that's pretty good. Looking nice. Um, next thing is to probably look at the clothes. So I have the the shirt and these sort of like inside sleeves. I just want to check the colours of these. Yeah, you know, I, I consider that they were all the same um, material. Now, obviously, these are looking a lot older on him. It's probably a better one. You've got a fairly good variation of um, of colours. There's dark and light, and you know, looks a little bit worn. It's very dirty. I need to start making it look a little less like it's just come off the. Um, the shop shelf, the shop um, rack. So I've dropped a base material in there, which I think was, you know, was reasonably good. See, once again, I've actually allowed um, in my modelling, I've allowed for stitching. Could have used a height map, um, but I, I like to have it actually built in there. It makes it a little easier, and it also looks a little more realistic. You can see the actual um, actual height there. All right, so it's going to save. Go and um, write a full novel while I'm waiting for this to save. Right. This is something I've been waiting to do, the clothes. I don't do a lot of um, sort of soft surface stuff. Did all this in um, ZBrush, which was good practice for doing some clothes. I think it came out pre pretty well. Uh, so, I'm going to close up the strap, open up the shirt, there's my base. So I did do some um, auditioning of various materials. So I need to isolate this. You can see, notice how I've hacked out a whole bunch of the model. I basically, in cinema, at the and just before I export it to unwrap, I hacked off everything that you're not going to see. Because you do, um, his actual uh, flak vest covers all of this. So I got rid of all of the polygons that you never see. Not very pretty, but hey, you don't see it. So you can see the actual, um, the dark line of the flak vest. Everything else is hidden underneath that. So much of the shirt you don't see. I mean, a lot of it is hidden under the pauldrons as well. So, you know. Uh, so let's let's audition a few of these again. So I had cotton canvas, which I quite liked. There's this one here, cotton fabric, Sean. Which wasn't bad. And cotton canvas washed out. Makes it like a safari suit. <laughs> um, so I don't like those at all. They can both go. This is why I probably went with cotton canvas. That's a good base. I want to check what my resolution is set to. So F3. And you can see my um, shirt is distributed across a number of UDIMs because I wanted to keep the resolution fairly high. Um, so it's 104.4. I might just take a part of it and say 105.1 probably. Or 
or 1044, 1044, 1051. So let me come in and select those. 1044, control click 1051, just change my resolution. See, I was looking at that and thinking it looks quite good, but I'm only looking at it in at 1K. I need to look at that at 4K to really get an understanding of what it's going to look like. Once I finish Mando, by the way, I'll be um, I'll be jumping back onto the Indian motorbike, so to speak. Ah, uh, look at the difference. The difference in that? There's, there's virtually no comparison. You, you must look at it in 4K. I don't like that on certain parts the angle is wrong, so I'm going to have to do something about that. Yeah, the bike's going to be um, going to look great when it's textured. <laughs> it's got to be finished modeled first. There's lots of modeling to do. It's all good practice. Okay, so I'll get this right, and then I'll go in and I will adjust it for various things. That looks pretty good. See, I've got fairly large texel density. So even up this close, it still holds up, which is really nice. It's going to be fairly dirty. That's low res. Okay, let's see what settings this has. Um, I've got my scale at four. I, I don't know whether you'd see as much um, uh, of a pattern in the material. Let me bring that up to six. See, I've got to be careful of moiré as well. If I see from here, you can start to see the lines in there. Up close, you don't see them. The distance you do. Let's make it five. That's better. Okay, so um, color variation hue, weave beads intensity. So I'm going to go through now and adjust these. Roughness will be pretty high. I think that roughness will be quite high. Also, but you know how on um, clothes that certain parts you know, get a bit sweaty and greasy and get a bit shiny. Other parts are a little are more dull. So I need to keep that in mind. Overall, I think keep it fairly rough and I'll, but if I don't increase the roughness, it'll start to be really shiny. <laughs> I like that. Hey, I got my plastic gear on. Uh, metallic is high. Let's just bring metallic down. Okay, so that's what's darkening it. I, I mean, how, how metallic is clothing? I mean, why don't I bring that right down and change the color, bring that right down to see what that does. Yeah, I'll just leave that as it was it was pretty close and weave bead intensity so bring that down and 
didn't notice a huge change in that. Let's just bring that right up again, up to almost one. Oh, okay. Weave beads. I think I'll just keep that really low. It's these little strips there. Bring that right down. Color variation hue. Let's bring that down. And color variation chroma. Bring that down. Uh, okay. Bring that back up, but I'll just bring the luma down. Uh, okay, so that's adding that sort of variation in there. Just bring that back up again. So you really have to play with these um, these substance source materials. Zero in on the look that you're after. I think I prefer that up a bit higher. We're not going to get this close to it. Okay, I think that's a pretty good base. But like I said, it is fairly dirty. Um, it might be good to, let's see, um, add a bit of color variation to it. Let's go do a quick save. Not so much to change, not so much to make it look like it has different colors, but to make it look like it's, um, um, as we saw in the in the reference image, a little bit sort of uh, faded in certain areas, and it might be also really nice to. Um, I already thought about this before. Add some um, cloth height detail because the reference image it's, it's a bit blurred, but it has like, some crinkling, that sort of thing. So let's just play a bit with the crinkling and see if that helps with this. It looks all way, way too smooth. I'll think about the color variation in a moment. Uh, let's see. That's my base. So what I'll do is I will keep that selected and add a new fill. Need to have it inside. Whether I'm uh, modeling or texturing. Um, I mean, having doing both obviously is um, is uh, is the best thing. Having that moment where you have finished the texturing, you've done the lighting, and you're doing the final renders, that's always a sweet sweet moment. Uh, I've got a few things that I haven't quite finished. Okay, so fill. That's fine. I'm going to alt click on height just to solo the height channel and a couple of ways I can do this. Um, one way is to, there's a whole different way, bunch of different ways that you can apply 
things in Substance Painter. One way is to apply it directly. Uh, another way is to use masks. So if I choose a black mask and add a fill to that, this can give me a little more control. And got some wrinkles in here. Let's work out where I am. Uh, F3. You can see that's right down in the bottom left on 101. I'm going to bring that up. There's different ways to do this kind of thing. And this isn't the ideal way. Let me just um, undo that. Um, to remove that and add a paint. Still got my dirt brush. Gonna bring my select my layer. I'm gonna bring my height up. You can see I can paint with height there. If I want to come into my paint. And in my grayscale, I'll just grab my different brush. I haven't done this for a while. Uh, brush. There we go. Big brush like that. And I can add some, I think, add some wrinkles in there. So I go through. I um, want to change the angle. quite good and I can go through and select this and just the thing about this is when you if you're using paint I can go and add that and I can come back click on the layer you just where are my settings and I can I can increase the height. See that? Or decrease it, of course. Let it go inwards. So there's not really any um, sort of wrinkle brushes, so to speak, I don't think. Um, so just using those wrinkle alphas with your brush is one way to apply that. I don't think there's any wrinkle brushes. Not like in ZBrush, you know, there's tons of that kind of stuff in ZBrush. If I go back to paint, 
um, you know, I can choose a different one. That one. That one's a little softer. Want to, you know, just playing around a little bit, working out which ones I might want to use. Definitely better to apply this kind of thing as a texture, I think. That's one way to do that. I'm just going to turn that off. Another way is the way I showed before, which is to add a fill and choose your texture. I'm just going to bring that height up a lot. F3. And once again, let's put that down at 1001. I've got to work out which... Um, which actual sleeve I'm looking at. Let's go uh, 3D, 2D is F1, so that's right. Just not sure which sleeve I'm actually looking at at the moment. What I'll quickly do is um, just turn on color as well. Ah, so I've got repeat turned on. I'm going to just turn repeat on, just have none. There we go. So now I can see which one I'm actually working on. I can change the scale of that. Don't want them to repeat. I want repeat set to none. Now where's it gone? Oh, it's way back down here. There we go. See, if they're doing it this way, I can actually precisely place and rotate using the same grayscale alpha, but in fill mode. This way I get to use the, um, uh, the manipulator. And that's actually not a bad way to do it either. So I could do that. It just took me a moment to work out where I was. So now if I turn off color. Ah, uh, see? That's actually quite good. So I can actually position these really precisely. Making sure that I have the fill selected. See that? I can rotate those into place. That's probably the, the way I would do it. That looks pretty good. Um, let's just increase the height. So I can increase or decrease the height. That looks so good. I love going in and adding this kind of um, detail to cloth. Obviously too high and you'd go to the side and it's like, huh, where did it go? Although I could use displacement, right? Um, I could export this as a height map and just use displacement and redshift and that would, that would be great. This is what I might do, depending on how much, how many wrinkles, because there's a fair few wrinkles in here. You see, especially in these sleeves here, that's actually quite wrinkly. So I might have to um, use displacement map. One thing that's going to give me is that hard edge. Um,
which is you know which is definitely an issue it depends on the grayscale image that you have and how it was created so that's another way to do that um, see just reducing the flow I mean that flow right up actually that works pretty well that's good Got to be careful of that hard edge there. Depends on how big I make my brush. Okay, so oh, I can see what it's doing that. Got a seam right there. Doing some tests here, really. I'm trying to work out why I'm not seeing that. Um, yeah, see the items? Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Ah. All right, that's good. Trick is, I have a round brush, and I'm just trying to see the angle of the um, <clears throat> see the angle of the stroke is a bit tricky. Uh, let's see. I know there's a keyboard shortcut to change the angle of a brush. I just can't remember what it is. Just doing some tests to see which brushes I want to use. Um, I'm using a graphic tablet now. I'm I'm using a Wacom tablet. I wouldn't I wouldn't work in Substance Painter without a graphic tablet. Be interested to know why I can't see those brush strokes on this side. I'm not sure why I can't see those. Let's get rid of that paint for a moment. See, I've been I've been painting on the um, I've been painting on the matte the mask as well, which is not a good thing. So I'm going to clear that still got height selected got a very big height UV projection turned on once again once again grab paint yeah I'm not sure I know you can change the angle somehow but I just can't remember the keyboard shortcut can I see that? Ah, okay. Paint on. Obviously doing something stupid here because I can't see my strokes. Okay, and there. But I can't on that one.
Hmm. I can see them on the mat. Got height turned up. Not sure what's going on there. Hey, Evan. Yeah, I was um, dragging it different ways, but um, I couldn't tell that it was rotating because I've got a circle. Oh, there you go. You can see it. You can see it rotating. Yeah. Okay. So I was doing um I was doing control right mouse button and I was doing um control left mouse button for the flow but I wasn't dragging up and down. <laughs> so it was left and right and up and down. So yeah, thanks for that Ahmed. Yeah. What I'm trying to work out is why I cannot see any result of my paint on that left one. So Gonna remove that once more. Uh, add paint once again. This time, turn on color so I can see what's going on. I still can't see it. Okay. Either I'm doing something dumb or something's broken. See, I can see it on that one. that works come over to this one nothing else works what about up here nope Yeah, I'm not sure why that's not showing up. It should be. It should be as simple as just applying a black mask, applying paint, um, changing your to, to height, adjusting the height, and then just painting it. But for some reason, I can't see it on all of my UDIMs. It's almost like they're um, they're isolated for some reason. I don't have any actual masks on anything else. Um, I can't even see any um, color either. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that layer. So that's all good. So I'll just add a new fill. Add a black mask. All good paint on the mask, there you go, we can see that now. Uh, I'll just use height, increase the height, and now it's working. I don't know, maybe that was a bug. For some reason that just wasn't working. Let's just add paint instead, and now it's working. So yeah, sorry about that, probably some kind of redraw bug or something. Yeah, so that'll be just a case now of um, going through, increasing the height amount. And this can be adjusted, of course, because this is all separate from the um, fill itself. Going through and painting in different creases.
getting the angle right. Um, and then if I want to, you know, I could rename this. I could name this Paint Couch 2 because that's the name of the wrinkle. And, and I could also add another paint. Change the wrinkle. And this, you can get some good wrinkle brushes online, uh, different fabrics. There's some wrinkles. These are Photoshop brushes, but these aren't going to be quite as useful. Uh, that one's got extra lines in it. This one could be okay. There's some good wrinkle brushes available. So that's, that's a pretty, quite a good one. It's a little bit... Um, the height's a little low. Let me bring the height up. And if you wanted to have different heights for different um, uh, different operators, you can't really... Um, I guess, yeah, you could use... Um, so if I put that in there, I could just change the opacity of that. See, I can change individual paints opacity, which is really good as well. So I can have all of my wrinkles just painted in using different uh, wrinkle alphas, and I can have it at different heights as well. So that's a really nice way to approach that. So I'm going to go through and do that for the shirt. Once I've done that, I will... Um, just add some color variation and then add some dirt and uh, some occlusion and I think that'll be good for that. But I won't um, I won't sit here and do that now. Might quickly before I finish just add um, color wrinkles. Turn that off for a sec and just come in and add another fill. And this will just be for color. And I want to sample a color from the image. So let me just click on color, click on the ink dropper. I'll just drag that across to the other monitor. Get some really light faded like that. So that's going to add that on top. Not playing with the roughness with it. Um, so this will be color variation one. I'll add a black mask and I'll add a few, few different things you could do here. Um, you could use an alpha, you could use a generator. Um, let's try adding a generator. And I'll use a, let's, I could actually, rather than do that from scratch, I could use one of the, uh, where's my shelf? I could use one of the smart masks. Don't generally use these too much, but th they sometimes are a good place to start. Let me just make these bigger. So I want something that's going to add some, let's see, some occlusion, cavity rust, solo dirt, occlusion strong. Maybe try this one. it's dust occlusion so I'll try dust soft edges so I'll just grab that I don't like my shelf over here I like it over here I'll just grab that dust soft edges and just drop it on the mask and that adds a generator in there that's already pre-built okay so see how that is giving you um, that variation in 
color. And, it's, and like I said, it's, it's less, less of a variation in color and more of a sort of wear uh, or fading of the material. The color's not quite right. I think I want it a little lighter than this. And like that. And I can come in and adjust the... So it's already set to base color there, so I can just knock that back like that a little too much it's probably needs a little less chroma as well bring up a little more gray like that adjust the capacity of it don't want too much because what I'll do is I'll add some darker areas in these folds That's not bad. I can go in and alt click. So there's still <laughs> probably a little too much there. Um, so I can go in and adjust that. So that actually worked quite well using that smart mask. This has got um, a texture in there as an input. I think that texture's you know okay. Um, but I probably need to go in and adjust the curvature on this. So it says edges. If I change that to cavities, that'll do the inside, and that's going to be good for the darker parts. So I might just duplicate that just to demonstrate this. Um, and remembering, we're not going to see a lot of this because it's going to be hidden. But for here, I'll change it to a much sort of grimier, darker, almost black. Right down in there. So that's going to be the cavities. And it's just turn it on and off. See, that's actually nice making those darker, you see. But I'll bring the opacity up. And I probably need to change the grunge texture in there. And you keep stacking up different things under your mask, different generators. That's probably um, not soft enough. So click on that again, increase the global blur because this one has a built-in blur. That's better. That's quite good. Love Substance Painter. So cool. That's quite good. So let's turn them. So that's the original. This is with that cavity black turned on, and this is with the other one turned on as well. I need to adjust that as well. Oh, this is actually now this one I've actually still got on cavities, so I'll change that to. Um, edges. Uh, then that's, that's too much. I, I have way too much on the edges one. So let's just come back to curvature and adjust the big, let's bring that back. So this is a mask editor basically, uh, but it's already got all the settings included. Bring the soft back. and knocking these back. How does that look? That's looking better. Remember, I haven't added any of the wrinkles yet, but that's starting to add some more sort of faded areas to that material. And I've never done this before for clothes, but once you start getting used to the tools, and I've even been a little bit rusty with these tools, um, you basically use the same tools for any kind of material. It's a little extreme. I mean, obviously there's a little too much. It needs, needs a little bit of a softer touch on there, but you get the idea. It's starting to look a little more worn. And the, the color's a little 
um, oversaturated, but it starts to give you a little bit more like this. And it still needs dirt and um, you know other bits and pieces. It might even be good on this to add a little bit of hair as well back in Cinema 4D. But the difference between that and that is quite a lot, isn't it? So that one and that one. So once again, just using different colored um, fills with um, uh, different masks with different uh, generators on there. And I could, I could include height in this. I could include roughness as well to break that up um, on these as well. So starting to look good. So uh, let's go Alt H and just bring everything else back. So we did the leather today. I've actually started off by cleaning up some of the Beskar, uh, Beskar, Beskar armor. Just get rid of some of those dirt splotches. Come in and just further adjust the leather. Going to add the stitches next week. And chose a new steel for the clip there. Used a um, UV polygon fill to isolate the um, belt buckle and started to go in and pay some attention to the clothes. So it's starting to look okay. Let's have a quick look in, um, I'll just save this, have a quick look in IRA. Still a way to go because I've got to do the gun, um, but uh, I'm just doing this in my spare time. It will be fun to bring it back across the cinema and have a bit of a play with um, with hair on the cape, and like I said, maybe on the clothes. It could be overkill on the clothes. Let's have a look in IRA. Obviously, this is just a um, panorama HDR. It's pretty flat lighting. I'm going to be doing a lot more specific lighting than this. Let's come a bit closer. Cape's starting to look good. Leather's starting to look good. Still a way to go. Gun obviously still needs to be done. Cape looks quite convincing with the uh, the shadows in there. It's only a little bit of work. It's probably a little bit too woolly as well. And the gun hasn't been done. Helmet's looking pretty good. Okay, so. It's come out of iRay. So hopefully I'll get a bit of time to work on that this week. And um, I'll definitely try and uh, look at the stitching and the, all the height detail in the cloth. And I'll show you what I did 
next session um, but overall it's starting to look okay so thanks for um, watching the session those of you watching live this will be up on the um, YouTube channel a little later on so enjoy the rest of your evening uh, enjoy your weekend and I'll see you in the next session